So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the four different types of pilots that fly private jets. And this is an important thing for you to understand if you're looking to acquire an airplane is understanding, you know, how much these people earn and uh, where the money's coming from and that. It gives you a bit more of a deeper understanding of the private jet world because very often people get caught in the, the whole airplane thing and they don't realize that the pilot is probably a lot more important than the airplane. So this is what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Welcome to Budget TV. If it's your first time here, my name is Fabrizio Poli. I'm your aviation advisor and also an airline transport pilot and the author of the book, The Quantum Economy. A special offer um, about this book uh, will be coming towards the end of the video. So stay on and see how you can grab yourself a copy and get the bonus that comes with it. So um, my previous video, I talked about um, chartering private jets. Um, and the first type of pilot that we're going to be talking about is the charter pilot, the pilot that works for the charter operator. Then we're going to be talking about pilots that work for fractional ownership companies, then the contract pilots and then the corporate jet pilot um, and talk to you about, you know, how, how this works. Now, um, I did say in my previous video, you know, do not charter your private jet out when you're not using it. And this is applicable in all cases. I mean, whether the charter operator is a good one or a bad one, um, the charter companies don't make really any money on the charters. Uh, they do make that 15%, but that does go and cover a, a few of the overheads they have. The few charter companies that do make money are those that have a, their own maintenance facility and they will offer maintenance services to you and they'll make 30% on the spare parts and some money on the labor costs, of course. Um, and then they also make money buying and selling aircraft. That's how they make their money. But if they're just doing pure charter, they won't make money. So what happens is uh, if your airplane, if you're chartering an airplane, uh, the pilot will be will have one of these contracts with the charter operator and they are the lowest paid out of the four. Um, and right now, the way the market's going with the airlines recruiting and some of the airlines in particular in the US are paying people joining bonuses of fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. A lot of these pilots are leaving. Um, so the charter operators are struggling to find pilots um, and, and retain pilots because the salaries are really, really low compared to the other three options. And then, of course, you've got the option of flying for an airline uh, or flying for a prince or, or a royal family and that where you make even more money. So uh, these pilots, captains usually make around about 130 to 150,000 a year um, in this realm. Um, and they just work for the charter operator. They may be dedicated to one airplane for the owner and that. Uh, but, you know, most of their flying is, is is on charters. The next type of pilot is that that works for the fraction ownership. We've got the main players out there, you know, NetJets being the most famous one. And then you've got um, um, a few of the others that are out there. And uh, these pilots uh, have a good shift pattern. Um, the NetJets pattern is a seven on, five off. And on day one, you travel out to the airplane from your home base. So let's say you live in uh, Los Angeles. You'll jump on a plane in Los Angeles. You're positioned to somewhere in Nebraska, you'll pick up the private jet, you'll fly around for five days, and then on day seven, you'll jump on an airliner back home to your gateway, which is Los Angeles in this case, it's this example. These pilots get paid more. Um, they also get a lot more training uh, than the charter operators. Um, a lot of the fracture ownerships, they, they train to a standard of a part 121, which is basically airline standard. Um, so, you know, you, you get a really, really good pilot with the fracture ownership companies, or at least most of them anyway. Um, because this is what they do. Um, and these pilots will make a bit more. They make probably about 20, 30,000 more. They also get a good package, a benefits package uh, compared to some of the charter operators. And of course, they get that stable roster pattern, which you don't get with the charter operators, where often enough you're 24 7 on standby. So uh, that's that one. The next step up is the contract pilot. And this is like the freelancer it's the guy that goes out, pays for his ratings pays for his recurrent training and is available on the market. And these guys can make an absolute ton of money. I mean, some of them are making up to $50,000 a month. And depending on what aircraft you're, you're uh, typed on, uh, you can be earning anywhere from about $1,200 to $4,000 a day, plus your per diems, which is about $150 a day. Um, and uh, so what you do is these pilots put themselves out there on a number of websites. A lot of this work happens through word of mouth. Um, I mean, I've done it before, uh, contract piloting, and, uh, you know, I've got three or four clients uh, that I work for, and, you know, they will, they know what I'm typed on, they will call me up, and they'll say, we've got a five-day trip, do you want to do it, this is how much we're going to pay you, and you can say no, yes, no, whatever, but then you're responsible for your training as well, and that's why you're paid more. This is a convenient one if you are an aircraft owner, and you maybe uh, only have two pilots, and you need an extra pilot now and again, you bring in a contract guy, which you pay per day. Um, it works. Most of these contract pilots are good. 
because they you know they have to keep going they have a number of clients that don't just work for one person and so they have to you know do, do their own thing um but you can make a really good living as a contract pilot i mean i'd say once you pay for your training and everything you can make 250 to 300,000 but you know what it does it gives you great flexibility because you 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 are in charge you can say no to trips and you can say yes to trips if you want to take 3 weeks off with your family and go somewhere you just say just block those 3 weeks off and you're pretty much in charge you you're basically got your own company you, your pilot services and that's what the contract pilot does of course it's risky because you don't have a fixed income if suddenly you get sick or have an accident um, you're out for a few months and you're not making any money so there is a downside to uh, being a contract pilot as well and then the the ultimate uh, pilot job uh, or almost the ultimate let's call it because there is another one above that is a corporate jet pilot so you work for a corporation uh, the corporation will hire you uh, if you're the lead captain you'll be in charge of the airplane so you'll make sure the maintenance is done you'll organize the roster of the pilots and that and, and these guys can make 250 to 400,000 a year um, this is what these pilots make now the beauty of having your own flight department and this is what I recommend to most people if you're, if you're buying one airplane is keep it all in-house hire a good lead captain that can manage everything for you because that way all the flight planning and everything you only have a small group of people that know where you're going and when you're going um, and it's always best to have that situation instead of putting your, your airplane out with one of these large management companies that maybe have a hundred airplanes under management and your airplane is managed by different people all the time and you've got so many people in the office there that know about your airplane the pilots are rotating around um, and just the circle of people that know what you're you're doing with the airplane just tends to get a bit wider and i always think the private jet needs to say private so that's why i, I recommend to everybody you know and I, i'll help you find the, the right lead pilot that will look after everything for you and manage your in-house flight department there is another level to that and that's when you're flying for one of these royal families in particularly in the middle east uh, those guys make a ton of money they've got really good packages uh, they tend to not fly much um, and you know they're making in excess of twenty five thousand dollars a month plus you get housing you get a car you get school for your kids paid for you get so many days unpaid leave bonuses and and, and you get tips as well um, so you know these guys can rake in anywhere up to half a million dollars a year um, now they're not easy to get into um, it's usually through word of mouth uh, into these flight departments but you know again if you're looking to buy a private jet again I recommend do not give your plane to a charter company to manage because you're asking for trouble what you want to do is manage it in-house so get somebody like myself I mean when I help people buy aircraft that's what I mainly do uh, as well as doing a whole airplane thing I also source the pilots and make sure we bring in a good lead pilot that can manage the whole operation for them and set that up for them and then they're, they're, they're totally independent after that and that's really really important because the private jet needs to stay private so that's my take on all this so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Budget TV and comment below subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up and get yourself a copy of the quantum economy because if you do this is what happens you get yourself a copy of the quantum economy by clicking on the link below buy the book read the book write a review for me and then send me the review on an email and i will get on a one-to-one -one call for free and we can talk about what your aircraft needs are and i can craft out a plan for you and um, that will be all free the, the plan will and then obviously if you want to execute the plan there'll, there'll be a fee for that but at least we'll have a one-to-one -one conversation which will help you to shed a bit more light on your specific case because as i always tell people i can only give out general information here on bizjet tv then we really need to hone in on your case your business and find out uh, important for me and my team to find out more about you in order to be able to craft the right customized plan for you because the private jet as I say will allow you to enter into the quantum economy which is what I talk about in the book which allows you to go at speed other people aren't going because you're going in and out in your own private jet you've got that power to spring into action at short, at short notice with your private jet um, and there's so many benefits to having a private jet it does cost money you have to have a certain level of wealth as I always tell people if you're thinking of chartering out when you're not using it then you shouldn't be buying a jet just charter uh, but you know the way to make the airplane make you money is to use it as a business tool and that's all for Fabrizio Poli here on Bishop TV I hope you enjoyed this episode check out this other video we did about should I charter my jet out or not when I'm not using it I'll go more into detail on that one there hope you enjoy that too and Remember, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you on the next one.